trigonometric equations one. Let's solve this equation. Well, the first thing I notice is that I have two cosine squared theta. What pops into my head is factor. And this one actually does factor. Now, when we factor it, we make each part equal to zero. Let's solve the first one. So it turns out the cosine of theta equals one half. Now, my constraints are between zero and two pi. So I'm not looking for a general form right now. When I look at my unit circle, it turns out that theta is pi over three and five pi over three. Let's look at the second one. I get cosine of theta to equal negative one. Once again, I look at my unit circle and it turns out that theta equals pi. So these are my answers. Let's solve this equation. Well, the first thing that I notice is that I have cosine of two theta. So I looked at my formulas and noticed that I can change the cosine of two theta into cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So then I noticed that if I put plus sine squared here, I would have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. That's one of our Pythagorean identities. Do you remember what that equals? Yep, it equals one. So then here's my minus sine squared and my minus sine squared. So then I also remembered that one minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. Then what I did was I took the square root of both sides and I get the cosine of theta equals plus or minus the square root of three over two. So it turns out that theta, my answers for theta, are pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. And I got those from just looking at my unit circle. I would like you to try this one. Press pause, find a solution, and play to check your answer. Let's do this one. So the first thing you always want to do is make it equal to zero. Then I notice that I have cotangent theta and cotangent theta. So I factored those out. At this point, I have two factors. So all I did was make them both equal to zero. I looked at my unit circle where the cotangent of theta equals zero. And that's at pi over two and three pi over two. The second one, I added two to both sides and then I took the square root. So it turns out the cosine of theta equals plus or minus two. But we have a little problem there because that's out of the range of our cosine function. Remember, our range can't be any greater than one or any smaller than negative one. So I know that this can't be a solution. But this isn't quite our answer because we don't have any constraints. So we need to find the general formula. Because cotangent of theta has a period of pi, the general form of the solutions is obtained by adding multiples of pi to pi over two. And this would get us theta equals pi over two plus pi. Notice that if I add pi to this one, I get this guy. So I don't need both of these in my general form, just this solution. I would like you to try this one also. Press pause, find a solution, and play to check your answer. This one was a little tough for me, so I decided just to square both sides. I really wasn't sure what to do. When I square both sides, I get sine squared beta equals cosine beta over two squared. I use my Pythagorean identity to change this one. I use my half angled formula to find this one. Then I multiply both sides by two. I was getting rid of the denominator here. Remember, we wanna make it equal to zero. At this point, I know that I can factor, but it's easier to factor when this is a positive two than a negative two. So I multiplied everything by negative one. Now it's ready to factor. And this is what I get it to factor into. We're gonna take both parts and equal it to zero. Let's look at the first factor. I get cosine of beta equals one half. When I look at my unit circle, beta is pi over three and five pi over three. Let's solve for cosine of beta in the second one. Well, cosine of beta equals negative one. That means beta has to be pi. But there's a little problem with this one. Since we squared both sides of the given equation, some of these solutions may be extraneous. That means they don't work. We're gonna check each value in the original equation. And that indicates that all three are valid. Basically, I put this one in, then this one, 
and this one into the original equation, and they all turn out to be true. So all of these are a solution, but you need to check just to make sure. Let's do this one together. I know that the cosine squared alpha using the Pythagorean identities gives us 1 minus sine squared alpha. What I did then was distributed 3 into both of these and then I made it equal to 0. So basically I subtracted 3 and added 3 sine squared alpha. Once again it's perfect to be factored. And this is what I get when I factor. We're going to make each part equal to 0 just like we've been doing. Let's solve the first one. It turns out that the sine of alpha is 1 over 3. Now we don't have this in our unit circle, so we're going to use the calculator. We get the sine of alpha to equal negative 3 in the second one. We get the sine of alpha to equal negative 3. But remember, that's not within the range of our sine functions. The sine has to be between 1 and negative 1. So I know this can't be a solution. So we're just going to look at the sine alpha equals 1 third. Let's use our calculator, like I said, since it's not in our unit circle. The sine inverse of one-third is approximately 0 0.3398. And we have two of them because we're within 0 and 2 pi. Remember, that's our constraints here. And so our other solution is 2.8018. Let me show you how that worked. The sine is only positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So let's say that this, let's say this is alpha. Well, to figure out what it is in quadrant 2, this would also be alpha. And to get that, since this is pi, we would just take pi minus the sine of alpha. And that's how we get this solution. So both of these would be my answer. And thanks for watching.